Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Hertfordshire series. This is a collection of 35 parishes around the towns of Hitchin and Letchworth in Hertfordshire. It's a nice area, so let's see what's in store today. Welcome back to North Hertfordshire again, folks. Now, today's start and end point is this green, which is called the Great Green. And on this green, there is half a maypole. I think it should be taller than that for some reason, but uh, for some reason it's just like a stump. I don't know why. There's probably a reason for it, but we'll discover that as we walk around. Now, we've just been in one of the two local pubs in this place, and that is the Mott and Bailey. And it's called the Mott and Bailey because this place has got a castle mound, and that's one of the first things we'll see in the parish of Burton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Continuing our journey around North Hertfordshire, today we're in Purton, regarded as a small village, but still much bigger than Holwell, which we covered last week. Purton is a lovely place. Its first appearance in any kind of official record was in the Doomsday Book. At that time, it was known as Peritone, which would eventually become Purton. Its name means Homestead of Pears. It's a compact village located on the edge of an area of outstanding natural beauty that borders both Bedfordshire and the slopes of the Chilterns. Much of it is a designated conservation area. Despite its quiet setting, Purton is just 35 miles north of London and almost equidistant between the A1 and the M1, giving villagers the best of both worlds, a peaceful country existence and good commuter links. There are two churches in Purton, one Methodist and one Anglican. There's also a village school and two pubs, namely the Mott and Bailey on Great Green and the Fox on the High Street. The Mott and Bailey takes its name from the fact that Purton once had a castle, and we'll be seeing that on our journey around the place. The Icknield Way long distance path, which stretches from Buckinghamshire to Suffolk, passes through the village, as does the Icknield Way Trail. There are many more reasons to love this one, so let's go and find them. We start at what is surely Purton's most iconic landmark, the Berry, earthworks that cover a vast expanse of land to the south of the village. This is Toot Hill, which is the site of Purton's former Mott and Bailey Castle, built during the reign of Stephen between 1135 and 1154. Unfortunately, not much is known about the castle other than the fact it stood on this mound, was surrounded by a moat and had an attached fortified village. The castle is thought to have been dismantled by Henry II. Toot Hill, by the way, literally means lookout. The berry is a large meadow with numerous mysterious humps, hollows and ponds. This would of course have been part of the fortified village that went with the castle. As earthworks go, these are some of the best we've ever found. The berry is effectively common land, crisscrossed as it is by a network of paths. It forms part of over 20 acres available to Purton for recreational purposes. 
proper earthworks. I love finding those. I love that you can see the lumps and bumps. That's that's uh, that, that's one thing I just absolutely love finding. Okay, now we're heading away from the castle and all these lovely earthworks into the church. And I've already lost uh, my wife, who's already gone into the porch. So uh, let's go and see what we can find in the church here, shall we? St Mary's Church has stood at the heart of the village for more than 800 years as a focus for Christian faith, worship and service. Despite there being a church here since the 12th century, the church you see here is actually a rebuild. It had to be extensively rebuilt between 1876 and 1883. This began with the tower, which was beyond any kind of repair. The new tower was completed in 1877. During its dismantling, it was discovered that the roof of the nave was also in poor condition. It was not until 1882, though, that a start was made on rebuilding that, and it was completed in the following year. Now a Grade 1 listed building, St Mary's is unusual for its simplicity and lack of stained glass. This was a result of a wartime doodlebug, which shattered almost all of the glass it once had. Its churchyard is also quite notable, and Nicky's keen eye for grave features led us to this one for a very specific reason. So one thing Nicky's noticed about graveyards in this part of England is that they have this sort of Egyptian style um, topper to them. And something else you might notice as well is obviously we're, we're familiar with the idea of a headstone, but some graves, if you walk around places like this, you'll find a footstone. And it's really there to mark the sort of boundaries of the grave as it were so if you're walking around the church yard like we are you'd know basically where to step that you weren't stepping on the grave that's the head that's the foot and it everything also, in between um, gives an additional marking space as well that you know if there were multiple people in the grave and there weren't enough space on the headstone you've got a footstone to add some names on to it yep indeed so there you go there's a bit of uh, grave um knowledge that you may not have known looks like it's had a bit of Weather damage. Lovely mosaic though. The sculpture we've just seen there can be found in the Purton Vicarage Nature Area, a small piece of land to the north of Toot Hill. The area is so named because it's right next to the vicarage, that's this building here. We're now on Crabtree Lane, and next up we have the War Memorial, which sits in its own enclosure in front of the church. There are 36 names on this one, 30 from World War I and 6 from World War II. There's also a small plaque behind this in the garden with several additional names. Here's the parish notice board on the corner of the High Street. Once again, Nicky did the honours. Two down in North Hertfordshire and 33 to go. Here's the second village pub, The Fox, which was originally a beer house. In 1912, a man named John Walker ran this. He was a higgler, a collector and seller of eggs. Purton is a thriving community, and this is evidenced by the number of events that take place at the well-used Village Hall, which has recently been refurbished. So, uh, Purton uh, is uh, the home of the Purton Players, and uh, this is their current production. From Wednesday the 29th of March to Saturday the 1st of April, it's uh, Nesbitt's Railway Children. Here at the Village Hall. Yes, here at the Village Hall. Tickets are between £11 and £13, depending on when you uh, want to come and see it. So that's the place to go. I'm sure they do other things as well, but uh, at the moment that's the current production that they're, uh, they're doing. Sounds good to me. There are two book exchanges outside the Village Hall. One is for adults, the other is designed for children. And speaking of children, next is the school. The current Purton Primary School was built in 1842. Schools in Purton have a long, very detailed history, and there's a link below that explains it all. Next door is the Methodist Chapel, which has a tea room open every Friday and Saturday. Its foundation stone was laid in 1906, and it opened a year later. Next are Hammond's Almshouses, which were rebuilt in 1877. These are named after John Hammond, who left money to Purton in his will in 1642 to found the Hammond's charity. 
via Little Lane, we come to the allotments. Cue wild celebrations from the fans out there, and we emerge from this onto Coleman's Close, where there's a playground. When this was built, this road was supposed to be called Sunflowers, but it's built on land which was attached to the Fox, which for some reason was always known as Coleman's. Gotta tell you, I have my favourite places all over the country, but so far, I know this is only the second one I've done in Hertfordshire, but this is winning. <laughs> this is winning at the moment. So uh, yeah, let's see if anything else can rival it as we uh, continue through Hertfordshire. So we're back at the Fox. We've come down this road to the side of it. We're turning left now, so we're going away from the church and we're heading down towards uh, a pond, which is the next landmark, according to my map anyway. Now to head down the high street in the other direction. Here's Ansel Village Stores, the local shop. Outside this, we found something very peculiar. It's a brick pillar with two post boxes in it, one on one side, which is Victorian, and one on the other side, which is larger, bearing the cipher of George VI. Now we come to a bench which overlooks the blacksmith's pond. This has been a part of the village for hundreds of years. Cattle and sheep would drink from this, and the local blacksmith would lead horses and ponies into it as part of the shoeing process. The blacksmith's cottage was literally just across the road. Towards the end of the high street, we found this wooden sign, which reads Village of the Year North, an award given to Purton by the Hertfordshire Society. It doesn't tell you, though, what year that award was won. I'd give it to Purton most years, if this walk can be used as evidence. Here's a parish map, which is adjacent to it. OK, now we've turned onto Royal Oak Lane, and we suspect there was a pub called the Royal Oak up here at, at one point. We want to find that out. Um, just as we've turned the corner, we've noticed this in uh, a garden here. This looks like it's uh, a window or something from a church or a chapel or something. Very, very strange object, but you know what? It's nice. <laughs> it's nice to see. OK, let's head up Royal Oak Lane and see if there was indeed a pub up here. Fun fact for you, every Royal Oak pub out there takes its name from when Charles II escaped after the Battle of Worcester in the English Civil War. The Royal Oak in Purton was part of this pinkish coloured building. It was the left-hand cottage in what is a row of three. It closed in 1914 and its last landlord was Stephen Day. Known as Stibby, he was the village's wheelwright and undertaker. After his death, his son Cecil ran a taxi business from the former pub. We're making our way through a residential area now towards West Lane. This is Bunyan Close, named after George Bunyan, the foreman who built this estate in the 1960s. You can get some good scenic views across to Bedfordshire here. If you squint, you can see the water tower we covered in the Mepishal episode in the distance. Purton also has its own water tower on Priors Hill, but it's not on our route. West Lane used to be called Wet Lane, by the way, because it often flooded and sometimes still does. OK, we've not got a lot left now. The last section of the walk will take us back to Great Green. When we get there, there are actually a few things which we haven't talked about yet. One of them, of course, is the pub, which we uh, enjoyed a nice uh, meal in before we did this walk. <laughs> Parsnip soup. Do you remember me putting that on Facebook a few weeks ago, guys? It was uh, quite nice, according to Nicky. The plane flying overhead. He's flying low, isn't he? Yeah. I wonder what that's all about. Anyway, it's not bothering us. So yeah, parsnip soup. We can recommend, apparently. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I've never heard of parsnip soup before, but apparently it was very good. I went for the uh, uh, bacon and brie panini. Um, so if you call into the Mott and Bailey, there are a couple of the things you can expect to find on the food menu. Via a footpath off Shillington Road, we're now on Pollard's Way. This is named after the Pollard family who were benefactors to the village in many ways. It leads back to Great Green and the Mott and Bailey pub. There's always been an actual inn here. Originally, the White Horse stood here, but it was pulled down in 1901 and replaced with the pub you see today. 
The other pubs in the village, including the Fox and the Royal Oak, were just beer houses which only sold beer. The shelter opposite is another little book exchange and also a bus stop. Purton is on the number 89 route between Hitchin and Henlow. Great Green used to be known as Chepping Green or Chipping Green. Chipping is an old word meaning market, but oddly, Purton has never been granted a market charter. On the green is the Maypole, and this is notable because it's the only one in the whole of Hertfordshire which is known to stand permanently. To the southeast of the village, almost opposite the Berry, there's a huge playing field which forms the rest of the 20 acres of recreational land in Purton. Known simply as the Rec, the playing field is where you'll find the village's sports and social club, which not only has tennis, football and cricket, but also hosts major social events, such as a summer fair and bonfire night. The current pavilion was donated to the village in the mid-1970s. It was originally a worksite hut and consists of mainly wooden clad walls with a felted roof structure. It served the village for well over 50 years, but it's now in urgent need of improvement. Given some recent new housing developments in the village, about £180,000 has been made available for a brand new pavilion which will be an important village asset. Village residents have shown overwhelming support for this at recent events where the plans have been shared and it's hoped this will soon become a reality. So there you go, we're back where we started about an hour and a half ago. Thank you very much, Purton. You are absolutely lovely. It's like Nikki said as we were walking around, this place has got plenty of character. Oh, and as if as, as if we're right on cue, here comes the number 89 bus. So if you want to come to Purton and experience it all for yourself, get yourself on the number 89 from Hitchin. I think it's well worth it if you do. What say you, Nikki? Yeah, just watch the birds though. One of them's plopped on my coat. <laughs> Occupational hazard. <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose, apparently it's good looking for bird pops on you, so I might have to buy a lottery ticket. Well, that's a good idea. Potentially we'll do that when we get back to Letchworth, which, by the way, is where we've been staying to record this one and the two that you've just seen in Bedfordshire recently as well. Now, we are done with this area for now. I will, of course, be back to Hertfordshire in the uh, not too distant future, hopefully. Uh, I've really enjoyed it in this part of the world and hopefully it'll all be the same going forward. I hope you, you guys have enjoyed these as well. We are now uh, heading away from the area and we'll be back at some point. But for now, this has been the Parish of Purton and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Thank you.